Hello, listener, and thank you for clicking play on this special release. Jockin' Nerd! Uh, on the last episode of the Jock and Nerd podcast, if you missed it, episode 354, I, Imran the Nerd, announced that I have started a second podcast. What? Yes, with my sister. It is called Dance of Joy, a Perfect Strangers Rewatch podcast. And to make it a little bit easier for you, listener, to check it out, I'm shoving the introductory episode of Dance of Joy right into this feed. I'm going to shove it right in so it's here for you. It's a short episode. It sets up the who, what, and why of the show. So if you, like Anthony, have no idea what Perfect Strangers is, if the names Balky and Larry don't ring a bell, don't worry. This fun intro episode will explain everything, and maybe we can turn you on to the Perfect Strangers. That would be great. And for those of you of a certain age, like my age and around my age and my sister's age, who grew up watching and loving the show, I think you're going to have a lot of fun with us taking this nostalgia trip back to the late 80s slash early 90s. Now you're going to hear about Dance of Joy, but I want to explain three ways Dance of Joy will be different from the Jock and Nerd podcast. Jock and Nerd! We're aiming for shorter episodes... I will still be talking a whole shit ton. <laughs> Number two, we've made the decision to make it a clean show. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, that's going to be hard for me, obviously, listener, if you've listened to the Jock and Nerd podcast at all. But hey, a challenge is a challenge, and I'm up for the challenge. And number three, this show is super, super niche. Terrific. Like, so, like we're just going to be talking about Perfect Strangers, maybe strays into some retro 80s things, but this is kind of something I wanted to try. Shorter episodes, clean show, super niche, and an, an opportunity for me to hang out with my sister once a week, get to know her better, and a project we could do together. I'm super excited, so I hope you enjoy this introduction episode to Dance of Joy, a Perfect Strangers rewatch podcast. And if you dig it, listener, make sure to subscribe. You can find it in all the major podcast apps. You can use the links in the description. You can search for it, or you can visit our website, danceofjoypod.com, for links on how to subscribe. And all everything else is set up. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the links are there. Hope you enjoy this. Check it out. And welcome to Dance of Joy, a Perfect Strangers Rewatch podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Imran. Joining me, my co-host and my sister, Sophia. Hello. How's it going, Sophia? Welcome to our introductory episode. We're going to kind of set up this podcast. Oh, I'm so excited to get this going. This is going to be quite a journey. Uh, what is this podcast, listener? Well, we are committing ourselves to reviewing, recapping, and discussing Every episode of the hit 80s sitcom, Perfect Strangers, that may sound a little crazy to some people, and other people may be like, that's awesome, this is just what I've been looking for. It's very niche, but it's something we are going to do. Basically, we're going to watch every episode, and in every episode of our podcast, we're going to break down the story of a Perfect Strangers episode, we're going to talk about the cultural references, because we want, we want a new generation of viewers to watch and appreciate this show. That's why it's on Hulu again. But there are a lot of references in there that might not make sense anymore. So we'll be talking about those, breaking those down. Of course, we're going to be talking about our favorite lines because my brother and I, we watched this show growing up. We loved it. And we have started rewatching it and discovered that it's just as funny. It's just as spirit lifting. Absolutely. Uh, and it's just as entertaining. So we have our favorite moments from when we were kids as well as now. And we're also going to be talking a little bit about how some of those storylines and some of the themes in the show would be similarly relevant or quite different if they were happening today. Plus, look, it's 2020 and I need something uplifting to help me escape from 2020. And this this show, uh, I was surprised at how 34 years later, this show still made me laugh. So for the, the, young, the young folk, the young listener, or maybe someone our age, what is Perfect Strangers? What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Indeed, Perfect <laughs> Strangers, an American sitcom 
ran for eight seasons from March 25th, 1986 to August 6th, 1993 on ABC. Sophia, that I don't know if you realize when we you decided to do this commitment with me. That's 150 episodes of Perfect Strangers. That is 150 episodes. Well, you know, we've been siblings for a few decades, so I think we can manage 150 episodes. Uh, easily, we're going to have to pull out 150 episodes <laughs> of Dance of Joy podcast. Oh, it's going to be great. Okay, so Perfect Strangers tells the story of a Midwesterner, a young man from the American Midwest called Larry Appleton, who's played by the amazing Mark Lynn Baker, and his distant cousin, Balky Bartokamas, played by the equally amazing and hilarious Bronson Pinchot. And Balky Bartokamas has traveled all the way from his fictional Mediterranean island called Mipos, which is kind of like Greece, but kind of different. Yeah. Uh, and Balky travels all the way from Mipos to find his cousin Larry and ask him if they could live together. And then hilarity ensues for eight seasons. And another thing that was great watching this growing up, it's set in Chicago. We grew up in Chicago. So I love I love this connection. Yeah, that was always very exciting. I think a, a very special thing for us when we were kids watching this show, because you didn't see a lot of shows set in your, even Chicago being such a big city, there weren't a lot of like cultural sitcoms set no, in not Chicago. Sitcoms. And even still, there aren't that many, but you have, you know, ER famously shot here. And then now you literally mm-hmm. have Dick Wolf's Chicago universe with Chicago Med, Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, Chicago Law. I, yeah, and then you have some sort of like out HBO artsy outliers or oh, Showtime, shy, I guess. The, the shy, shy is very good. The Shy yeah. is very good. As yeah. much as I love the city, I've not seen one Dick Wolf Chicago show. Like, I just, it doesn't interest me. They're all the same show. <laughs> I over haven't and seen over any of them so, either. Yeah. Uh, Perfect Strangers originally aired on Tuesdays for their first season. It was six episodes. It was a mid-season replacement in the spring of 1986. The following year, it moves to Wednesdays in primetime. Uh, remained on Wednesdays till 1988 when it was moved to Fridays and ABC launched uh, their original TGIF Friday night lineup. Remember TGIF? Oh, my God. It's Friday night and the mood is right. We're going to have some fun. Show you how it's done. TGIF. I do. Uh, TJF was a big deal when we were kids. It was like the thing to do on Friday night. Isn't that strange? Friday night, you would sit at home, prime time. Watch two hours of TV straight. Family Matters, just the 10 of us, perfect strangers, full house. That was the, the, the first run. And then, you know, it lasted many years. And they, they changed the shows around. Step by step later yeah, on. Yeah, step by step. But I mean, Perfect Strangers, one of the flagship TGIF shows. Perfect mm-hmm. Strangers created... The brainchild of a dude named Dale McRaven, who also co-created Mork and Mindy, and producers Tom Miller, Robert Boyette. Miller Boyette also produced all those shows. They kind of did all the ABC shows. Yeah. And you can – and just by knowing uh, the creator and the producers, uh, we already can understand that this was set up to be a buddy comedy yep. sitcom which was influenced by the very many and great fantastic buddy comedy sitcoms that came before it shows like Laverne and Shirley, Mork and Mindy. And even before that shows like the honeymooners and Laurel and Hardy, things like that. This was just the 1986 version of a modern buddy sitcom with one of the buddies being an immigrant and classic (laughs) inspirations. I love all those shows. Laverne and Shirley, Mark and Mindy, Dale, Dale McRaven wrote on Mark and Mindy. He also wrote on the Dick Van Dyke show. He wrote on get smart, which is another one of my favorite older TV shows with, uh, uh, Don, was that Don, uh, Don Adams. Did you watch get smart growing up? Did you like that? Of course I did. Oh my God. With the shoe phone and everything. Uh, also another great tidbit to throw in here is that Lucille Ball, actually reached out to them yeah. and said that she really appreciated, loved the show. Like she contacted them. So to get uh, uh, an endorsement from a comedic legend like Lucille Ball, and it was, they were great. They were, this was a great buddy comedy show. Yeah. And I think they probably took a lot of inspiration from Lucille Ball and her physical comedy Absolutely. as well. Yeah. You know, and you see that tradition go on in, and people like, like Will Grace from Will and Grace. She's great physical yeah. comedian. Same yeah. way. Uh, the inspiration from the show comes from a very interesting place, Sophia. Why don't you tell us about that? 
So the show came out in 1986, uh, just a couple years after the 1984 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles, when America was experiencing a wave of renewed patriotic sentiment. So people were mm. very pro-America, rah-rah America. Yeah, sounds the Olympics familiar. had just happened. Yeah. So here we have these producers with this idea for a comedy about an immigrant in America. And guess what happened? They took it to all three major commercial networks then. And? And they all rejected it. ABC, CBS, and NBC were like, no, we don't want to hear about immigrants right now. Sounds familiar, Isn't doesn't it? Isn't that interesting? Given Isn't that interesting? Kind of similar. Wow, how things repeat themselves. Look, all I'm saying is it's 2020. Look around. Yeah, and I think, you know, we really need some good shows about immigrants now, but obviously it would it would happen in a different way. But the thing is, like, you know, these kind of sitcoms also, and we'll get into a little bit later, they're not really around. There are shows that are on streaming that are told now from different points of yeah. view that are very, very enlightening. But back even back then, they're like, nope, no immigrants. So the other thing that happened in 1984, Bronson Pinchot played uh, this character called Serge in – Eddie Murphy's Beverly Hills Cop, hilarious. He steals the scene every. He's not in it a lot, but he it's steals. Like two minute scene. It's one like two minute scene. He plays an effeminate art gallery employee, and he steals every scene he's in. He also has a similar unplaceable foreign accent. Uh, so when Miller Boyette saw that, they were like, "We need him to play the immigrant." And at that point, the show was in, originally called The Greenhorn. Which isn't that, is that a slur? Probably a little bit problematic, (laughs) right? Yeah. (laughs) However, Bronson couldn't take the role. He had taken this role of a gay attorney in a NBC show called Sarah alongside Gina Davis that was eventually canceled in 1985. I don't remember Sarah at all. I don't even know if it ever came I don't remember it either. I mean, we were young, I guess, but... um, so one thing about Serge is you can go, Serge became the character of Serge, who was only in Beverly Hills Cop for at most two minutes. That one scene uh, rocketed Bronson Pinchot to such fame, and he had almost a cult following. You can go online now yeah. and go on Reddit and look up Serge, and you'll see people who are still like, this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. It's like a one minute, um, a one minute and a half scene. It's amazing. But it was also progressive at the time because it was it wasn't he played an effeminate kind of man just as a matter of fact yeah you know and fun fact about serge um he that scene is him and eddie murphy in the scene together and the director had just told bronson pinchot you know here are the lines do what you want with it and eddie murphy did not was not expecting this funny accented yeah. character. Yeah. So if you watch the scene on YouTube, there's clips of it. You can see Eddie Murphy trying crack, yeah, very up. hard I not to laugh. I love it. And, and I think not he, to break. He improved a lot of those lines yeah. too on yeah. the spot. So with Sarah getting canceled, Pincho is now free and available. Miller Boyette start developing the show. It was retitled Perfect Strangers and Here's another interesting fact I learned. Comedian Louis Anderson was cast as the cousin. <laughs> it was going to be Cousin Lou, not Cousin Larry. They even filmed a pilot episode with Louis Anderson. Uh, and then at the end, they, after the pilot, they, they, they decided he wasn't right for the part of Larry, of the cousin, American cousin. I'm happy about that decision. Absolutely. Mark Lynn Baker, who... We'll just put it out there right now. He has no lips. I don't know what happened yeah. to his lips. <laughs> but, they, no you lips. know, there's there's several interviews of both Bronson Pinchot and Mark Lynn Baker talking about this moment where they had already cast Bronson Pinchot as Balky and they were auditioning different actors to be Larry and they had gone through like four or five and then Mark Lynn Baker walked in and from the moment they did their first lines together, it was immediate chemistry um, to the point where they didn't even have to finish their thoughts they just knew what each other were uh was thinking and you could see that from the very first episode their chemistry is on point it's electric yeah as soon as that happened just like you said all the production went into overdrive they saw mark lynn baker on moonlighting uh and then they gave them the prime slot on tuesday night between who's the boss and moonlighting uh which is a which was a perfect spot to debut the show 
and uh, it was I think it was a hit. Yeah, and we're doing this podcast because we enjoyed this show as children, my brother and I. Uh, but even now in rewatching it, especially in 2020, as you said, which has been, you know, a very trying and challenging year for a number of reasons. Uh-huh. So in rewatching this show, to answer your earlier question, what is Perfect Strangers? It's 22 minutes of pure joy in the middle of all the madness that's happening. It absolutely is. Uh, well, look, let's just cut to why Perfect Strangers, because I did want to talk about why we chose and we kind of explained a little bit. It started with me, honestly. I just discovered that it was on Hulu. Apparently, it's been on Hulu since 2017. I was scrolling through Hulu, Sophia, and I was like, mm-hmm. oh, Perfect Strangers. I remember this. I hadn't seen it 34 years. I was like, I remember watching this. All the seasons are here. This is amazing. Let's yeah. throw this on. And I and I remember I texted you. I was like, oh, my God, Perfect Strangers is still hilarious. Yes. And literally a day later, I was in my apartment just just cackling out loud cackling like belly laughing losing it isn't that great discovering something new again for the first time and so you've been watching a little bit more ahead than i have yeah i watched i picked and choose some some of the episodes i remembered fondly and then when we decided to do this i was like all right i'm gonna go back i'm gonna i'm not gonna i'm gonna wait i'm gonna watch it as we record but i think that you going ahead you, that's a different perspective that's also helpful yeah it should be interesting and so we did a little research uh and couldn't find any other Perfect Strangers rewatch podcasts out there. And so we thought, you know what? We're on to something. There is no other Perfect Strangers rewatch podcast. And I think it's on just the beginning of a little bit of a renaissance. I honestly think yes. so. I, we saw them, you know, w- that Wizard World uh, video. They were, there was a panel. There's kind of a resurgence. People are now rediscovering the show on Hulu. So hopefully we can get them to come along with us for the ride. Another great thing about this is in, it's in the tradition of what I love and miss, and it's the multi-cam sitcom uh, mm-hmm. that uh, has been replaced with single-cam sitcoms. Let me explain what this means. The show traditionally, like it shot several cameras, three cameras on a set, on a stage, kind of like theater with a live studio audience, right? And there's a director and a switcher, and they're cutting back from camera to camera. This is how all sitcoms used to be for years, for decades, you know, if you think about classic sitcoms, it wasn't until the stupid office changed everything. Don't get me wrong. I love The Office. It's a brilliant show, right? The Office is a single cam comedy sitcom, meaning it's one camera following. There's no laugh track. It's kind of filmed like a movie. The rhythm of comedy is different in this situation, right? There's You, you play jokes differently. It's very weird. And suddenly, I, you must have noticed this, Sophia, every stupid comedy show is now single cam <laughs> when a few years ago i discovered the it crowd on netflix I from the bbc the IT crowd. that was mm-hmm. a return to the live studio so funny sitcom. And i was like this is amazing i forgot how much i missed multi-cam sitcoms um i don't think you're allowed to disparage the office on a podcast no, i think that bad. might be ah, illegal like my podcast I think it's actually revoked. illegal. You're going to be arrested. We're going to get the office fans are going to tweet us. Save put your <laughs> tweets away. Please. Let the record show that Imran disparaged the office. I had nothing to do with it. What, did did did, did you notice the shift in uh, sitcoms, or is it just I'm kind of geeky and nerdy? Where I noticed these things, did this bother you? It bothered me. I mean, I don't think I noticed it in the moment as it was happening. Good old fashioned multicam, which lends, yeah, which lends to the improv nature and spontaneity of certain things. So our show, this podcast is called Dance of Joy Podcast. And if you're a fan of the show, you know that reference. And if you've never seen Perfect Strangers, you will learn that reference as you listen to our (laughs) podcast. Who is our podcast for? Our podcasts are for other people like us who watched this show growing up and loved it and want to relive the hilarity of Marklin Baker and Bronson Pinchot. It's also for a younger generation who might have, who maybe have never heard of this show. Yeah, yeah. But I promise you, if you are in that younger generation, haven't heard of this show, I promise you, you will love it. And if you don't, you can write to me and tell me all about it. But you will love it. And uh, we'd love it if you watched if you watched along with us, came back to hear our analysis of every show, because there's going to be a lot of cultural references in these episodes from 86 and beyond that you might not get. And we'll be explaining those as we go. I mean, there's stuff you have to look up. There's stuff I have uh, to look up that I don't even and get. And you're the smart one between us. 
That's what they say, at least. Uh, fun fact, the Dance of Joy, actually, they did it 22 times in eight seasons of the show. So I thought the name came out perfect. Okay, finally, Sophia, we got to end with who are we? What gives us the gall to start a Perfect Strangers rewatch podcast? Who are you? We are two people with microphones, and sometimes that's all it takes. And internet, exactly. That's all you <laughs> and internet. Take. Okay, so my name is Sophia Javed. I am a stand-up comedian. I'm based in Washington, D.C., but I grew up in Chicago with my brother Imran. And I think what gives us the authority to, to do this podcast is that Imran and I uh, were raised by sitcom television. Pretty much. We watched a lot of sitcom television growing up. Entire summers uh, where others might have been out, I don't know, going to summer camps or learning music or playing sports. Where were we? We were glued to our television. Yes, we were. Raised by t TV. Marking the hours by what was on the TV. Guide. It sounds sad now that we put it that way. But I yeah, loved it, though. I, did, I, I no, Me too. I'm not sad about it at all. I enjoyed my childhood and my relationship with these TV shows. Uh, so I'm just I'm, I'm happy we get to talk about one that we love. Uh, anything else about who you are? Yeah. So like I said, I'm a comedian. You can check me out at sophiajaved.com, S-O-F-I-A-J-A-V-E-D.com. And I'm on Instagram at at Uh, give me, check me out. Give me a like and a follow. Well, my, for myself, uh, this is not my first podcast. I've actually, uh, co-host, produce and edit and do everything for, Another podcast called the Jock and Nerd Podcast that's been running for five years, five and a half years now. We just published our 350th episode somehow. I don't know how we've been uh, continuing to go, but it's a show about comic book and superhero TV. And I'm joined by my friend Anthony, who's the jock. And there's a puppet named Rug Boy. Yes, you heard that right. There's a puppet named Rug Boy. We review movies. So I have, you know, a couple of years of podcasting under my belt and you, Sophia, you you know, you started this wonderful stand-up comedy career, and we were looking for a project to do together. We were. Yeah, yeah. we kind of built these separate things uh, on our own, and I'm excited to do something with my sister. Is that, is that cheesy? I'm very excited to do something with my brother. The other thing is, you and I both grew up watching these sitcoms, and it wasn't just 80s and 90s era sitcoms. Like, when, when I say we spent our summers watching TV, it was sitcoms from before our time from yep. even before that and so i feel like we grew up cultivating the same sense of humor from those references from those shows that we were watching and we grew up and we took separate paths into comedy you with your podcast and me doing stand-up and and other things and this is a great way to come together and do a project that excites both of us and those old shows were great you know anything from honeymooners i love lucy the adam west batman show uh, all of that stuff, like three's company stuff that wasn't even appropriate to watch when we were kids very not appropriate yeah. i can't believe there's so much innuendo on three's company but this isn't a three's company podcast listener this is a perfect strangers rewatch podcast there it is you know the show. You know who we are. This is what we're doing. Make sure to subscribe uh, to the podcast. You can find it on all podcast apps from Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, uh, anywhere podcasts are found. You can get in touch with us. Let us know if you're listening or if you have questions about the show. Email danceofjoypod at gmail.com. Our website is danceofjoypod.com. Make sure to follow the show on Twitter at Dance of Joy Pod and Facebook, Dance of Joy Pod. And there will be a Facebook group soon. Search for it, Dance of Joy Podcast Facebook group. So we can interact and get to meet, uh, you know, longtime fans of the show and new people who found the show. I hope we turn on new the, these kids these days. Yeah, and we'd love to hear from show. you about what you want us to talk about or what you want us to explore as we go through every episode of Perfect Strangers. That's right. And we hope you join us on this journey. Thank you for listening. And now we must do the dance of joy. Now we are so happy we do the dance of joy. <laughs> hey. Hey, 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 h